From the onset of taking office, the PPPC began setting the stage for the country's infrastructural development. Between 2020 and 2021, over $74 billion was invested to transform the country's aesthetics. Expansion of the Cherijagan International Airport and the upgrade of the Sheriff Mandela Roadway were fast-tracked to completion. Guyanese benefited from an extended runway at the Cherijagan International Airport along with the installation of the instrument landing system, a revolutionary project. The runway at the Lethem airstrip was also extended, catering for the landing of larger aircraft, with government investing a mammoth $185 million for the project. Added to that, people from across the country for the first time in years saw how their taxes were being spent. The ordinary man living in rural and hinterland communities witness roads and bridges built that improved accessibility. That momentum started in 2020 is overflowing in 2022 with an aggressive agenda set by the Ministry of Public Works. The Ministry received the $96.1 billion from this year's budget, of which $76.7 billion is earmarked for roads and bridges. It is the largest allocation to any sector, a stark reminder that the PPPC government means business. The $6.4 billion Sheriff the Mandela Road project is now completed under the PPPC administration. This is after multiple setbacks under the previous government, which frustrated Guyanese daily. Today, the road provides a comfortable means of transport to thousands of Guyanese. Its completion falls in line with the PPPC's manifesto commitment of expanding main roads and other essential infrastructure to accommodate growth in population and the traffic. The completion of the $2.6 billion four-lane Mandela Avenue, the Eccles Highway, is another major project executed with efficiency by the PPPC government. This project was conceptualized since 2013 when President Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali was the Minister of Housing and Water. It was started and completed with him being the head of state. He describes the road as a project that will enrich the lives of Guyanese. With its proven track record and a dedication to improving the lives of Guyanese, government completed the road which immediately eased the traffic congestion on the east bank of Demerara, as well as significantly reduced the travel time. The time you save will become value to you. You go home an hour earlier or 30 minutes earlier, it's 30 minutes more with your children, with your family. That is the type of value that you consider intangible, but those are the tangible value that is most valuable. As the Guyanese parable says, self-praise is no recommendation. Let us take a listen to what people had to say about this transformational roadway. The road is a good initiative and um, it can ease up the traffic very much, especially on the East Bank. You know, we all know East Bank is a, is a lot of traffic. So it's a good initiative and it's good work. I must commend the government for such a great job and keep the progress going and continue the, the work that they've been doing. I definitely think it will boost tourism. I like how Guyane is upgrading everything it, it's coming along real nice i like it well actually i would say that it's a pretty much great initiative because it actually will reduce and curb the crazy congestion of traffic on the east bank so it is a good initiative so the traffic could be eased well i feel the government make a good initiative help ease the traffic because you know from the east bank it got various Roads that vehicle coming out from. You got Diamond, you got Eccles, you got Over the River, you got Mocker. So I think it just easy traffic and it can be good. Just want to keep it up and let us continue in development. Wasting no time, government immediately commenced works on the road that links Eccles to Great Diamond on the East Bank. A whopping $13.3 billion is being expended to continue the alternative road link. It includes the construction of more than 30 reinforced concrete bridges, two roundabouts, and a total of 9.4 kilometers of reinforced concrete road. 
This road too is aimed at reducing the traffic congestion on the East Bank. Additionally, the cutting of the two roads have opened vast lands for residential, commercial and industrial developments. Closer to realization is the anticipated road link between Ogle on the east coast of Damarara, the Eccles on the east bank of Damarara. A US $106.4 million contract with Indian company Ashoka Bilcon Limited was signed to begin the first phase of the project, which was at a stalemate under the previous administration. Minister of Public Works Bishop Juan Edgel made it clear that nothing will stop the government from fulfilling its commitment to transform and modernize Guyana. I am happy that today we are not just talking about plans, but we are actually witnessing the beginning of the execution of a major transformational project that will be signed here today. We have moved Guyana forward. But with the building of this four lane, in the first instance, to connect at the Higgs Bus Road, and then to get forward into Diamond, and then further into the airport, would see us being able to open up new lands. It's more lands for housing. It's more lands for agriculture. It's more lands for agro-processing. It's more land for industrial development. It's more lands for laydown yards and the rest of it to deal with the oil and gas sector. Building infrastructure for the future is part of the theme that outlines the administration plans to improve accessibility and connectivity. The PPPC government has been making commitments to improve the lives of Guyanese and has been delivering that. The creation of an all-weather road from Linden to Mbura Hill and further to Lethem in Region 9 is one such commitment that government is delivering to its people. A US $190 million contract was signed with a Brazilian company to commence construction of an asphaltic concrete road from Linden to Mubura Hill. Measuring 121 kilometers long and 7.2 meters wide, the road will carry two lanes and feature a shared cycle and a pedestrian lane measuring two meters wide, along with 10 bus stops outfitted with ramps for persons living with disabilities. Several bridges and culverts will be replaced, along with the installation of lights and nine vehicle rest areas. This project, as large and important as it is, is not a standalone project. It is part of an integrated plan for a more prosperous Guyana. It's not just a road that is standing out there, unconnected with other things. Of course, it is about improved trade through Guyana. Of course, it is about generating economic activity, including in areas such as logistics, tourism, A hundred trucks, containerized trucks, per day minimum, coming through from Brazil, they have to come through Linden. You better get your restaurant open. They will need fuel stations. They will have to be serviced. They will have to have rest stops. And you know if you got a hundred trucks coming through with goods, that is only the business. But what about the tourists? You don't have enough hotel rooms in Linden to accommodate tourists that will be coming as a result of this road. It's time for people to make investments. It's not just a road. This will derive benefit for miners who travel this route, 
it will derive benefit for people in the forestry sector who use this route. It will derive benefit for people who are engaged in agriculture during throughout this route. And much more other benefits that we intend to bring to Guyana by connecting the township, the main township, to Letem. As you can see, creating the link between Linden to Lethem is no fallacy. To further cement this, government signed a $3.19 billion contract for the upgrade of 32 bridges between Kurupakari and Lethem. The bridges will be built to international standard with an upgrade from wood to concrete. This is no small project and must be treated seriously because the intent is that this road must meet all international standards and the removement, removing sorry, of the timber bridges and the putting in of concrete bridges must be to international standards because eventually we'll have to pave the whole road. Transformation of a country cannot and will not happen in a vacuum. With that, government is currently seeking funds to resurface one of the country's main highways. That is, the 72-kilometer long Susdike Linden Highway, which is seen as the gateway to the hinterland. Some other major road projects government is working on include the rehabilitation of the quarantine main road from Palmyra to Crabwood Creek, widening and paving of the East Bank Highway from Grove to Tamiri, the upgrade of the railway embankment from Sheriff Street to Orange Nassau, and the construction of the new four-lane superhighway from Schoonard to Parika. Some $15.2 billion was earmarked for miscellaneous roads on the coast. These are roads that are in front of your homes and health centers, for example. The program is being rolled out at a rapid pace. However, improved accessibility is not limited to the coast, but is also extended to hinterland regions where the country's first people reside. This solidifies the government's one Guyana vision. A whopping $3.4 billion is being expended on the development of hinterland roads. In Region 8 alone, $290 million is being invested in 28 villages to increase their connectivity. The sum caters for maintenance of 917 kilometers of road along with repairs to 31 timber bridges. The work is being executed by the people living in these communities, a strategy government has been pushing since 2020. So I'm happy that I'm happy to get the contract because right now we're getting some road really destroyed due to the weather and and we have some farms going down to Paramakutai side and which in we we have some greens where where farmers plant some greens but up to now we can't get we can't get some of the stuff to to bring it to the village because of the road. It's very 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 bad. And even to even to the wood materials we can't get out of the uh, road materials we wood materials we can't get from the from the forest because the truck can't go down right now. So with this contract I think we should do a better work and then would benefit our community. Yes, we, we do farming, but um, we do not really transport our produce on on the roadways, I should say. But we do have a lot of marketing whereby some traders would be coming from passing through Region 9, even from the coast, we would find some people coming to do business, and that is um, that is where our roads are important because it's benefiting us one way or the other or we may have some um, like government officials education officials medical officials they need to get to point one to point be using these roads and that is where it's very important for us talking the talk and walking the walk is probably the best way to describe government's delivery of these transformational infrastructural projects the signing of the u.s 260 million dollars contract for the construction of a new Damarara River crossing speaks for itself. The high-span bridge across the Damarara River removes the need for bridge retractions, congestion and significantly reduces travel time. It means getting from point A to point B will be less burdensome as it is currently with the 44-year-old bridge. 
The new bridge will be 2.65 kilometers in length and 23.6 meters wide to accommodate four lanes. What is even more impressive is that it will have a lifespan of 100 years. The signing of this contract today is truly monumental and will lead to construction activities never before witnessed in our urban space. There is going to be some inconveniences on the land side as well as in the river, perhaps even in the air over the next two years as piles are driven on the land and in the water or as sand is transported to the work site or as the towers are constructed to connect this cable stay section of the bridge. But at the end of the inconvenience, we will have achieved monumental progress and development. Guyanese that, that use the old bridge daily heap the praises on this infrastructural masterpiece. It can help a lot because it never open. I mean, tell driver tell you never gonna open. It. So if traffic on flow steady, everybody can get a move. But like when one then close off a double lane and the next thing I'll wait it's a problem. On a daily basis I would have to apologize to customers due to the traffic congestion and not being able to deliver on time. So like every day we right now if you check my phone as you can see I'm working here. We just apologize to a few customers like persons who in the canteen business who would have to prepare the stuff on time. I think it would be good because um, there wouldn't be so much of traffic build up and it, uh, that the traffic could move freely so that everyone can get to do whatever they came to do over here and likewise to go over there. So every morning I, do, I travel from the west coast. I come all the way from Tushin so um, I have to make my way to TPNC. Um, I usually don't use the bridge because of um, all the traffic that builds up there. It doesn't matter how early you come, there's always traffic there. However, while construction commences for the new Demerara River crossing, government has invested over $1 billion to keep the old bridge afloat. There was even the introduction of an automatic tolling system to improve traffic flow on the bridge. Residents of Linden Region 10 have been assured that the Wismar Mackenzie Bridge will be upgraded to accommodate the massive development on the cards for the region. To date, the studies and designs are completed. Government is at the stage of securing funding to make the bridge a reality. When we speak of transformational projects, the expansion of the Chadijagan International Airport is nothing short of it. The project began under the PPPC. When it left the office in 2015, the US $150 million project was at a snail space for five years under the previous administration. Under the astute leadership of President Ali, the project is practically completed. The works have paved the way for larger aircraft to touch down at Guyana's major international airport. The monumental project is also gaining the attention of several major airlines. That was important for the future of where we're going as a country. Right? Very soon, you will hear about other airlines that will be coming to Guyana because we are negotiating that, we are discussing that, we are finalizing that. And we have to be able to develop and this airport that we inherited when we came into government did not have the capacity to accommodate code D and code E type aircraft and we wanted an airport that could accommodate that we insisted with China Harbor we got that and we can now accommodate it the country can now boast of having one of the longest runways in the region that was coupled with the installation of the instrument landing system. The ILS is a radio navigation system that provides a short range of guidance to aircraft to allow them to approach a runway at night during bad weather. It guides airplanes down the runway as low as 200 feet from above the runway. Expanding river transport and improving ferry services is yet another manifesto commitment that government is fulfilling. The $2.5 billion Northwest MVMA Leisha vessel, which will soon set sail to Guyana, will improve the lives of Guyanese in Region 1. It is expected to cut travel time in half, but that benefit is just the tip of the iceberg. The economic benefits it presents are tremendous and unprecedented for people in the hinterland. The massive vessel is a 69.55 meters long with a beam of 13.5 meters. It has the capacity to carry 250 tons of cargo 
and accommodate almost 300 passengers. This is in addition to being able to transport 14 sedan type vehicles along with two trucks. At present, vessels going to the northwest could only accommodate a mere two vehicles. Persons. This is a real, real game changer and life changer for people in the northwest. So we can carry 14 vehicles plus two trucks, 250 tons of cargo. The boat will be able to carry 10 containers, 10 10 by 10 containers. The boat will come with those containers, which means that business people and others who want to ship produce from and into the interior will be able to get containers 10 feet by 10 feet. Improving water transport also means the development of the requisite infrastructure. This has led to the economic prosperity returning to the people of Fort Island with the commissioning of a $82 million stelling where farming and fishing are the main sources of income. This is evidence that we want to integrate back in a manner that allows people to make the daily living. If they farm here and they got produce, they got 15 bunch of banana, they could put it on the, take it to Perico, planting the same thing, whatever they farm here, they could take it out. And that's what that, the stelling is about. It's not about the $82 million alone. It is about making sure that four time is not cut off. The absence of the stelling coupled with the COVID-19 pandemic had placed a strain on the people of the island. However, things are now making a turn for the better. I see that as a way that more it would encourage more tourism because a person will be taking the ferry coming here and whatsoever you have to sell, you will showcase it so that you could get a sell and in the afternoon they go out back. So the stelling was the most the backbone of Fort Island years ago where all the residents used to go out there and when the ferry stop, you will get cow milk, you buy corn, and that is what I want to bring back in system now. Government is also working to bring to completion the Bartica and the Leguan stellings. In just two years, Guyana has experienced unprecedented infrastructural development. With what Guyanese have witnessed in this short period of time, what's to come will only be better.